very interesting one. And it may surprise you that not everybody wants to go to heaven. Some people don't want to go to heaven because they don't believe in heaven. They don't believe in God, therefore there's no heaven. Other people, because of their experience with God or their perceived experience or their theological view, don't want anything to do with God. And so therefore heaven's not a place where they want to go. But for most all of us, we want to go to heaven, um, just not right now, someday. Most of us are in that situation. The Greeks had a view of seven heavens. The seventh heaven is where the immortal spirits live, waiting for a body to be born into. The Jews believed in three heavens. There was the heaven where the birds are, the heavens where the sun and the moon and the stars are, and then the heaven where God lives. That is helpful for us in 2 Corinthians 12 when Paul says, I know a man who went to the third heaven. So that's what he's talking about, going to the place where God lives. So some of us look at that and say, well, heaven must be out there somewhere. Other people would say, no, heaven is all around us, that it's another dimension. We just don't understand, we don't see it because it's not a part of our limited experience. And others would say, it's not true yet, other than God is everywhere, but heaven is gonna be here on earth. And it's a very interesting concept. And some would object and say, well, no, it says heaven and earth are gonna be destroyed. But one of the interpretations of 2 Peter 3.10 is that rather than the earth being destroyed, it's gonna be refined. It's like iron that's in its rough state and then it's, 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 it's refined so that the pure state of the iron comes out and that the rest of it is destroyed. And so it means more of the idea of renovating, renewing, getting rid of the impurities, and then holding on to what is left. Other people would look at it and say, uh, you know, there's an interesting passage in uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, which we commonly call the rapture, where it says that the saints will meet the Lord in the air, and so they'll go and be with the Lord forever. But some people interpret this fact, I just read this this week, not intentionally, just in the reading I was doing, where it says that there was an ancient practice that when the emperor or a dignitary was coming to a city, people would go out to meet that dignitary and usher them in. And that perhaps that passage is saying that we would meet the Lord and then bring him to here on earth and he would restore the earth to what God originally created it for. Well, to tell you the truth, I don't know. But what I do know is that where Jesus is, it will be heaven. And so I want to state something that I've said before, but I think it's very important, that eternal life is not a place. Eternal life is not a period of time. Eternal life is a person. And where Jesus is, it's going to be heaven, no matter where that might actually be.